11 exception areas, which is considered a minor map amendment to the comprehensive plan. The subject property is located here in the yellow outline at 2184 Ross Lane, which is just east of the intersection of Ross Lane and Hanley Road. This location is south of the city of Central Point and northwest of the city of Medford. This map here shows the current goal 11 exception areas. So you can see that it has uh, several uh, directly adjacent. The property is zoned EFU and it's primary, primarily surrounded by other EFU parcels which are shown in the light green on this map. The southwest corner of the property abuts a residentially zoned parcel and then there's another small one here which is surrounded by the subject property on three sides. The property is currently in agricultural use and it's developed with several agricultural buildings. Um, the owners currently have an application and process for an agricultural processing facility. The proposed facility would be an upgrade from their existing facility in order to allow the, the applicants to be able to sell into the larger commercial food supply network. Um, the FDA, which regulates food safety standards, requires proper collection and disposal of waste through a municipal sewage system or a subsurface septic system. <clears throat> the owners have applied for and have been denied a septic system approval due to a high water table on the property, leaving a sewage lagoon as the only alternative that doesn't require the, goal, uh, the exception to goal 11. Development of a sewage lagoon isn't really a feasible option for the owners due to the federal food safety requirements as well as the owner's current organic farm certification. Therefore, the only option that's really available to the owners in order to upgrade their agricultural processing facility and to expand their agricultural use is to connect to the sewer line and it runs um, along the southern boundary of the property. The main criteria for the Goal 11 exception is in the OARs, and those require the county to adopt findings that demonstrate why there's no practical alternative to a sewer system connection, <coughs> while also ensuring that the connection won't lead to serving uses other than those justified in the exception. So I'm going to now summarize the criteria and the findings that are listed here in the following slides. As stated in the last slide, the main criteria is in the OARs, um, which require us to adopt findings that demonstrate why there's no practical alternative to the sewer system connection. Uh, the applicant is trying to construct a new agricultural processing facility. The FDA regulations require collection and disposal of waste through e either a sewage, sewage system or a se subsurface septic system. Say that quickly three times. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the applicant has applied for and been denied a septic permit. Um, since the application for a septic system was denied, the sewage system, or a sewage lagoon is the only alternative that doesn't require a Goal 11 exception. Staff has accepted the applicant's findings that a sewage lagoon is not feasible as the FDA standards require agricultural process processors that sell into the larger commercial food supply network be connected into a sewage system or a surface septic system to ensure proper collection and disposal of waste, as well as the threat to the owner's existing organic certification. The applicant is not requesting the sewer to serve another use beyond the proposed agricultural use. Since there's no other practical alternatives to sewer service for the applicant to move forward with the use of their property for agricultural production and the associated processing facilities, staff finds that this criteria is satisfied. Um, it should also be noted that in addition to the restrictions within the EFU zoning district, the county has adopted provisions within section 3.6 of the LDO to <coughs> severely limit the extension of sewer lines without justification through a goal 11 exception, such as through the application that's before you. Approval of a goal, election, goal 11 exception must ensure that only rural land uses will be served and approval of this application will allow the applicant to move forward with their proposal for an agricultural processing facility, which will enhance their use of the property for agricultural production. 
Staff supports the applicant's findings that they don't impact the statewide planning goals. But there's this is laid out in the staff report, but there's a few goals that I wanted to mention specifically. Uh, the purpose of goal three is to preserve and maintain agricultural lands. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that the proposal will help to preserve and maintain agricultural lands since the request for the goal 11 exception is to meet the federal requirements for an agricultural processing facility to process produce grown on the subject parcel and other lands that the owner has in agricultural production. Goal 7, the purpose of Goal 7 is to protect people and property from natural hazards. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that the proposed agricultural processing facility in connection to the existing sewer line will be located above the floodplain elevation. Both will be required to obtain a floodplain permit prior to construction and will be required to meet floodplain development requirements. Uh, the purpose of Goal 9 is to provide adequate opportunities for a variety of economic activities. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that connection of the sewer line for the proposed agricultural processing facility will have a positive impact on the economy by furthering commercial agricultural activities. And then lastly, uh, the purpose of Goal 14 is to provide for an orderly and efficient transition from rural to urban land use. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that the parcel zoned EFU and that no zone change is proposed for this application. Approval of the application will actually enhance the existing commercial agricultural use. In the Jackson County Comprehensive Plan, um, there are several criteria that are applicable. One is Policy 1, and there's an implementation within this public facilities and services element that the county should create an exception process where strict application of the ordinance may cause an unnecessary public hardship. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that the proposed connection is necessary to avoid any unnecessary public hardships. Approval of the application will also will allow the applicant to comply with applicable federal standards for food safety and help them expand their commercial agricultural operation. Um, policy 2 states that the county shall not allow new extensions of sewer projects except as allowed in policy one after review by the planning commission and, and board of commissioners staff accepts the applicant's findings that the applicants only seeking approval for the connection of the agricultural processing facility to an existing sewer line located immediately adjacent to the subject property and the application is subject to review by the planning commission and the board of commissioners and then policy five states that connections to sewer lines outside of the urban growth boundaries and unincorporated community boundaries may be permitted only pursuant to state law in the Jackson County Land Development Ordinance. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that these that they're seeking approval in accordance with state law and the Land Development Ordinance and those findings are all included in the staff report. Um, the transportation system plan requires plan amendments and type 3 and 4 land use permits to demonstrate that adequate transportation planning has been done. Staff accepts the applicant's findings that impacts will not occur on any transportation facility and this is supported by the TIS waiver that's included in the record. And then in Jackson County's land development ordinance, um, there's provisions within section 3.6 of the ordinance that severely limit the extension of sewer lines without justification through a goal 11 exception, such as through the type of application that's before you today. And then section 3.7.3 lists specific criteria that the applications are required to comply with, and staff has accepted the applicant's findings for compliance. As a final recommendation, staff agrees that the evidence submitted by the applicant supports the approval of an amendment to the comprehensive plan map for an exception to goal 11 to allow connection to the Rogue Valley Sewer Services sewer line and add the property to the goal 11 exception areas. Should the Planning Commission agree with staff's recommendation, a recommendation for approval will be forwarded to the Board of Commissioners for their consideration. And that concludes my report. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any questions from Sandy? Yes, I guess I have a question. Page 36 of the record. It probably is that. Okay, 
it says that the subject property uh, uh, is in the EFU district, and then it says that approval of the Goal 11 exception will protect environmental assets, um, providing for the safe and sanitary disposal of effluent that could otherwise contaminate and threatening threaten existing agricultural production. It just my question is, if we don't approve this, is is <coughs> going to be a processing facility? They don't really have any other ways to move forward unless this gets approved. So all my, I, I, it's nitpicky, but it seems to me like there wouldn't be any pollution because there won't be a processing facility. Well, I think that this referred to um, a sewage lagoon, and um, that's not really a viable alternative to them because of the FDA regulations. And th th in other words, as a practical matter, there there won't be a sewage lagoon. There's either going to be this or nothing. That's my understanding. That's my question. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. The staff report is very good. Uh, we'll open the public hearing and hear from the applicants at this time. Please state your name and address for the record, if you could. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Amber Fry. My address is 424 South Grape Street, Medford, Oregon, 97501. I am the daughter of Steve and Suzanne Fry, who own the property. My parents have been farming here in Southern Oregon for about 25 years. At this point, they farm over 90 acres in the Rogue Valley. Uh, this parcel that we're talking about, they farm about 25 acres there. And then there's a farm in Ashland and in Phoenix as well. All of their produce is certified organic and has to be kept to that standard in order to sell through our stores and our wholesaler. Um, we also are good handling practice certified and good um, agricultural practice certified with the new Food Modernization Safety Modernization Act that is being passed through at this point uh, in order to keep these certifications and to be able to continue farming 90 acres and if we want to continue to grow we need to be able to process the goods through the way that they are stated in the regular in the um, in the guide for minimizing microbial food safety hazards for fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, we have a minimal facility at this point on the property already and in order for our operation to continue to grow and to process what we have right now it needs to be upgraded and the only way that we can upgrade the facility is gaining access to the sewer through this goal 11 exception. And so with that, um, we leave it in your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Any other qu any questions for Amber? Yes. Yes. Um, if you couldn't put the processing facility on this plan, yes. would you, uh, truck the produce to uh, town and process it there or something? Or? There's no other certified organic uh, vegetable processing facility uh, in Southern Oregon at this time. So this would be the first of its kind. Um, so we wouldn't be able to truck it anywhere. There's nowhere to, for us to truck it to. Um, the only option would be that the farm would stay stagnant. We wouldn't be able to produce more goods because there would be nowhere to process them. We can continue processing where we are um, with what we're doing, but in order for us to grow, we wouldn't be able to, and we're struggling to make viable product through the facilities we have and with food safety becoming 
um, an even stronger issue and with certification becoming even more difficult to obtain. Um, we feel that the facilities that we have right now in the future might not pass the good handling practices and the good um, agricultural practices that are needed to sell into a wholesale market. Will others use your facility, other farms? Uh, yes, that is an option that um, we would like to have available, that other people that don't have the ability to process their own um, vegetables because of the situations that they're in and because of the Food Safety Modernization Act, they could use this facility to process their vegetables as well. Yeah, so, so Amber, uh, th this is what I think I'm hearing, so I'm just, I'm just going to ask you to make sure that I'm hearing this the right way. Yes. You folks are farmers. We are farmers. This land is zoned EFU, which means exclusive farm use only. Correct. And the purpose of this permit is to allow you to be better farmers. Correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I had that right. Thank, yes, thank that's you. exactly right. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Steve Fry, would you like to speak? Thorndike, uh, mailing address PO Box 1588, Medford. Um, I'm like the farm lawyer. I mean, I, I mainly just do our family business, Medford Fabrication, but my wife uh, farms with the fries, and if you're a lawyer just sitting around, you get kind of pulled into <laughs> that kind of stuff. And I, I do pay my malpractice insurance to be able to do that, so I'm, I'm good and have to. But just wanted to, and it, it's sort of point, pointing out, I think, uh, Commissioner Bennington's point is sort of interesting. It's sort of ironic in this case to be going for a goal 11 exception given the goal 11 was originally intended to protect agricultural uses and here we're, you know, it's, it's a bit convoluted. We're actually having to get an exception to protect agricultural uses, but I think that does reflect um, uh, changes that have happened since since the goals were adopted. And that's primarily the food safety issue is, has been huge. I mean, clearly in the news over the years there's been different nationwide issues involving food safety and as a result nobody out there in the in the larger market is going to take stuff that isn't hasn't gone through all the gap in GHP there's actually a longer acronym than GHP but it's basically the same thing so the fries uh, a couple of years ago they had one employee who spent all year achieving gap good agricultural practice and good handling practice certification it's it's a pretty long and expensive process, especially when you're organic. It sort of it makes it more difficult when you're organic to meet these GAP and GHP standards. So they did that, and now, again, as, as I mentioned, just having the, to be able to, to process um, on the good handling practice side and, and meet the standards, they were, there is minimal processing that goes on the facility, on the property now, exactly where, where, where this, or adjacent to where this would be located. But one of the, the notions is also to be able to provide the good handling practice service, essentially, to other farmers. There are going to be more farmers in our region who are big enough to wholesale part of their production, um, but they're not big enough to justify building a facility. They're not big enough to justify spending the money to get the GHP certification. They'll all have to get GAP certification to be able to sell in for their actual on-the-ground practices. But the handling practices um, we can provide. And relating to that, I just want to point out that this was um, uh, one of the top priorities of the regional solutions, the governor's regional solutions team for our county, and in fact have been in the successfully awarded $480,000. <coughs> Um, out of the last session to be able to build a facility large enough to handle other other farms in addition to just the fry application uh, fry fry facility so and so as a consequence an indirect effect of this is actually we're going to be protecting agricultural the agricultural economy and practices in a, in a much much broader sense than just the price um, 90 to 100 acres so um, it's was kind of it was good news <laughs> out of the session to be able to get that. So, so by approving this, we're going to be able to actually have really pretty consequential effects on agriculture in the valley. So, so this facility is being built in part with state 
uh, Correct. grant be, funds. And, because again, it, to be able to build a large enough to handle that, it's uh, almost sort of exponential once you start sizing up to that. So roughly would cost, it will cost actually more more than the 480000 uh, coming through the state grant to, um, to size up even to get that from the base price to, to provide the facility. Where's the nearest similar facility? Is there one in Josephine County or? There's nothing in Southern Oregon, actually. Commissioner, this is it. This is in response to what I probably supposed to do. This, yeah. this, this we'll, we'll discuss later. Yeah. Okay. Again, there really isn't isn't one. Um, you know, the big wholesaler for for um, organic is called Organic Growers Cooperative. You'll see their trucks going up and down the freeway sometimes, and then the Fries are members of that cooperative, and they they are the ones who distribute organic produce um, pretty much up up, the, up and down the coast, and they're they're based out of Eugene in Portland primarily, so there are probably facilities there, but you can't you, you can't load it on the truck their truck they don't do that they don't do the processing. Right. So you have this to be. Kind of a pilot wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, we'll we'll, okay, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll ask you questions in a minute. Okay. So anyway, that's that's the problem. There really isn't any any place else to do it on this scale. I mean, right now they're the fries do process their own produce meeting GHP, um, but but again, it's a pretty minimal. It's it's basically some old truck vans and and water systems that are there on the property now, but it's not. Not at the scale you have to do. You have to, a lot of it is involving keeping things cold, so you have to you actually have a system too that takes the food from the field in refrigerated units, gets it to the processing facility. They just purchase a huge hydro cooler where you basically just dump that stuff in and it brings a temperature down of that stuff, or whatever you're putting in, whatever vegetable, very quickly. And that's you know, it, it's that kind of a process, cold chain process, to go on, and then you keep it cold until the refrigerated truck comes from OGC. They keep it cold, and you know, from there it goes into the supermarket system. Well, this isn't just a concrete slab and a hose. And <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's a pretty big, big thing. They just about broke their all their uh, forklifts trying to get that piece of equipment off the uh, off the truck. <laughs> it's a little, little risky. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Um, any, if, any, if you can make, make any other comments, um, I, I can say, I can okay, Mr. Fry. Yeah. Um, Your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Steve Fry. I live at eight six five seven Wagner Creek Road in Talent, Oregon, and uh, our home farm is here on Ross Lane, where the processing facility we hope will be built. So, to address your question about the. Uh, uh, other processing areas in the valley, there aren't any. There are pear packing facilities. If I had pears, I could take them, surely. Actually, I had pears, and I couldn't get them processed because I'm organic. All my product is organic, and you can't mix organic with conventional. For me to run pears through the conventional processing machines, they have to literally wash down all that equipment and I have to get a letter that they did, sanitize that equipment, and then run my pears. I got out of the pear business because 80,000 pounds of pears was impossible for me to process, literally, because nobody in town would shut down their line and clean their equipment. So it's the same with, uh, and when we went to the regional solution people, that was the same question. Hey, there's a lot of warehouses in town. Why can't you set up in there? Well, those warehouses, the pear warehouses, are so huge and so big, I don't need to cool that much space. We're talking about a smaller, a large a 40 by 60 cooler. But, you know, that's to me local needs, not this giant three-story warehouse. So that was, you know, the regional solution thought, well, yeah, we want to address just small farms. Um, for me, to, there are actually... 
we got into the farm to school program because we were one of the only GAP certified organic food producers in the state of Oregon. It's it's kind of a rare deal that we got for us to process our produce and keep it with these federal mandated certifications. What our wholesaler requires, we have to expand our facility to meet the new on going and upcoming Food Modernization Act, the Food Safety Act, um, federally mandated, that is going to put a lot of small growers actually in jeopardy losing any wholesale outlet. So, you know, and I've been to all these access uh, food seminar shows that say, what are we going to do for small farmers when this happens? I mean, years, three, four years ago, I went to the first one, and it was like, all of a sudden, it just came to me a couple of years ago that, dang, let's build this thing. So we can keep the small farms in business in this valley when this Food Modernization Act comes in, and to keep my business going. When you're farming 100 acres of produce, you got a lot of lettuce. <laughs> That stuff's got to go somewhere, and this valley's tapped. It has been for years. So we've been selling to Eugene, Portland, and Seattle. I can't grow enough. I'm looking for more fields. I've got the machines now to process the stuff. I just need a building and a slab so I can get some hoses working. <laughs> and I can flush you. Our water is all treated with... Uh, uh, antibacterial chlorine bleach, just like all the pear guys. So all that water, you have to flush it every so often. It's got to go somewhere. That's why we need to hook up to the sewer, to flush all this water out of these machines. So, I mean, that's pretty much the idea of why we're doing it. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? <coughs> all right. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, we've got exhibits. Motion to accept the exhibits 1 through 25. I'd like to make a motion to accept the exhibits 1 through 25. Second. Roll call. Mr. Tirock? Yes. Brad Bennington? Yes. 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 We'll close the public hearing for we'll do that. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, are there any questions of staff or anybody? Discussion on this? Uh, you know, I've, I've got a lot of family that's still still in farming, and to me, this is the epitome of the kind of thing that we need to be supporting. That's in, in conformance, I think, with our with our guidelines. I mean, these these people are farmers. This is farmland. They want to be better farmers. This is this is a hand and glove fit for the kind of thing that we ought to be doing. I think. Thank you. Well, I couldn't agree more. I would also say, if somebody in the legislature from Southern Oregon. <laughs> wanted to really um, help Southern Oregon, I think it would be uh, important to try to convince the legislature to waive the restriction on hookups to a sewer system. We have a sewer system in our county, uh, the potential to expand it. It makes no sense to me to have septic tanks um, and lagoons and so forth, when you can have a, a modern sewer system, it doesn't mean we're going to urbanize farmland. It just means that we're going to approach this intelligently and take advantage of the opportunities that we've had since really the 1960s when BCBSA came in, and it just baffles me why uh, we can't do that. When you've got a sewer, you can't hook up to it especially for something like this, to put them through a, 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 a this kind of an application for well, yeah. something that's for a farm processing. It's like, that makes absolutely no sense. So, you, did, have we, have we, you know, the state did say they might let us do some more if they, if if our last uh, go around with our, with our, when we did the exception, the countywide exception, did, has there been any discussion about that a little after this? Because we certainly proved that we're not going to do that, I think. Right. I think the during the area-wide goal 11 exception process, when we, you know, the county went to the legislature to see if we could get 
um, an exception, basically, a legislated exception. Um, and there was a desire to sort of not let us do that, but let us, you know, um, go through this pilot program, which we've done for this area-wide Go 11 exception. Because I think there were those that wanted to make sure that we were not going to be sort of opening the door to a lot of rural development as a result of this goal exception, the area-wide goal exception. And that hasn't happened. Um, I think that, and I think you're right, this is a perfect example, it's the irony, like um, Dan was saying, is, you know, Goal 11 was really to protect farmland from, I guess, the thought that if you extended services, that there would be more potential or and or more development in the rural areas. Um, we haven't embarked upon anything further than Goal 11, <clears throat> and at this point, I think, um, if the county was going to be looking at something, we would be looking at what Commissioner Tiroff is talking about, and that's a having a legislative, yeah. a, a legislated um, solution to this issue of us having a an area wide uh, sewer system that is, you know, not the norm statewide. So we have some unique characteristics here. We have a regional sewer system, and we have very poor soils for. Um, and on, on site systems. So, um, if we were going to look at anything, I would recommend that we look at something legislatively because I think we have the now, we have the experience to prove that this area wide goal 11 exception that we extended to, cause anything. you know, so a, a wide variety of properties didn't cause or hasn't caused those properties to develop in, in a way that they couldn't have developed before the area wide goal 11 exception was proved. So. And, um, I, yeah, go ahead. Well, and with regional problem solving, I think that really uh, uh, reinforces the argument that um, we're not going to be uh, urbanizing all the farmland and resource land. Um, yeah. that, that's all settled that is you're right so well it's maybe something that we need to think talk about to the board next time we talk to them about a joint uh sponsoring a legislation yeah I think that's we've a good done idea. that in the past yes and and uh it may be time again especially with the evidence that we have that can defay you know defer their worries that we're going to urbanize the county and so and not have to have uh you know really good farm people come in and do this kind of thing so one of the really great things about the uh, Commissioner Turoff asked how many other facilities were like this, and, and uh, the reality, and I, I just know this because I have family in the farming business, is that this whole organic farming uh, concept it, it is still fairly new, and it's a moving target, and it's being, and it's cha it changes year year by year. So the really really great thing, one of the really great things about this, uh, as it happens, is is it's going to, and they talked about it a little bit. This is going to become a resource for other farmers in our area. And they're going to be on the cutting edge. These kind of facilities are, are few and far between. So the existence of this, once it gets built, is going to leverage the economic ability of all the other farmers to use it as, as, as well. So this is, we're not just helping this particular applicant, we're helping our whole area once this, once this gets up and running. Because these, these rules that they're complying with, are I mean, the ink on these rules is still wet. I mean, as they're... they're, they're, as they're complying with these new organic rules. So this really is going to be a wonderful benefit to our whole area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All right, I'd entertain a motion on this. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to uh, approve the comprehensive plan map amendment for an exception to statewide planning goal 11 according to staff report for file number 439-15-0006-LRP. Second. And second and make approve, approve this and recommend it to the board. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Thank you for uh, all of the great farming and the, you know, you guys have been really champions of the organic movement and I, we see that up here and Really, really appreciate it. So, thank you. Okay.